Hey guys, Drifter here. Today I've got a fun video for you that is a fan theory about where the story in Fortnite is going to go with the cracks in the sky, the rifts, and the new rift to go item. It's going to be a crazy video. You need to get your tinfoil hats ready because we are going to be going way off the rails in just a minute. But for right now, you probably saw the announcement with the new rift to go item coming soon. As far as I or anyone else can tell, it's gonna be a handheld item that just lets you instantly rift up to the sky. And it kind of looks like a little snow globe, like a little glass ball with a little rift in it. It's probably gonna have the same throwing animation as the grenades or maybe the bouncies or something like that. But this little item set my brain on fire. Not with rage, as many Fortnite players have got into. They tend to get very angry about the go-karts or the rifts or whatever new fun thing that Epic's throwing at them, but it always pans out. But rather with an old fan theory that I had almost abandoned. Many months ago I had this theory and I was kind of like working it out in my head. I'm like, ah, maybe that's not really real. I'll just throw it away. But this just brought it all back. So let's jump straight into the meat of it today. And that is... I believe that the entire world, and I mean all of Fortnite Battle Royale, takes place inside of a little snow globe or perhaps a slightly larger terrarium of some kind. And yes, you heard me right, that's why the thumbnail is so crazy looking. I think this whole game takes place in a little controlled sort of handheld globe, and that's gonna sound very very strange i mean it could look like this or like one of these little guys but you get the idea and i think that the cracks that you see going across the sky in this game are literal cracks in the glass at the top of the map or which in this case for our characters would be at the top of their snow globe and this can come in basically two scenarios which is where the uh the fan theory is going to get way way deeper both of these are fanciful, but they're fun for me, so I hope you enjoy them. The first one is my personal favorite, and it is in short that the entire world of Fortnite Battle Royale takes place in the mind of a child who's playing with their action toys, and what we're playing through is their fake world or fake setup. It's kind of my personal theory that I have a lot of fun with, but it's less plausible than number two, which we're going to move on to. This kid likes playing with ancient knights. He likes playing with lifeguards. He likes playing with his teachers, with the firemen, with police officers officers. He likes playing with superheroes because Marvel movies were really popular. And he played with Thanos because his daddy got him a Thanos doll and Vikings and most dangerous of all John Wick. Somebody let this kid stay up late and they watch John Wick and then they watch Cowboys. And the reason for the skins coming into the map as crazy as they are other than the fact that Epic needs more cosmetic money for whatever reason like they don't have enough money right now is that the kid is just constantly changing their toys. That's what kids do. They have something that's popular. They buy it. They play it. They pick up something else and move on just like adults and games and trends pretty normal and the reason the map and the world is always changing or the story is kind of disjointed sometimes is that the world is changing as the kid plays with the world around it as he the kid gets bored of superheroes and he wants to play with cowboys he plops down some desert as he wants the meteor to destroy a city he just flattens it and then all oh, well you know for the next little scenario he's playing through we'll build it back up and the kid's getting new toys and he's learning new things he's changing the set He's changing the stories and the character, and he's kind of manipulating his own little world. Lots of kids play like this. When I was a little kid, I did exactly the same thing. I had a Lego knight set that ironically had a black and red knight, not that dissimilar from the one that's in the game, and it had a nice base that I could build on. And I literally, it was green and had hills, and then I literally had a desert one that was flat, but it had like nice decorations and a windy little desert road on it, and I had a space one and all these fun things, and I had all these weird hodgepodge of Lego characters, and I would put them down and build these big bases, and they would have cannons and guns, and they would either go, I, I would literally play Battle Royale, I would make them all fight to the death. Each one would have a story and a character and a name and they would duke it out. We would have teams and they would fight and it would turn into some kind of epic battle. And that's what kids do and that's how I would imagine the story of this game would play out. And the cracks in the sky of this world are the cracks in the playset for whatever this kid is doing. In my case, my Legos would eventually crack and the ones that had hills would just crumble so you could kind of go inside. So I would have characters hide in there and do weird things like that. And yeah, I totally get this has a very Lego movie kind of feel to it, but it matches the story of what we're doing so well. It would also explain the no blood and the cartoony characters and the overall lighthearted nature of the game. 
A slightly darker tone could be that this could be a child from the Save the World campaign where everything is infested by zombies and he's desperate and about the only thing he has left is his little snow globe and he likes to look at it and imagine something fun happening, poor little kid. But you know, like any kid, uh, he adapts, he changes, and like I was talking about with the holes in my playset where my Lego men would get to cheat, in this case his little Lego friends or whatever action figures he's playing with can teleport around the map. So that was a fun theory. That's not really the most plausible one for the cracks in the sky. We're gonna go over a way more plausible one soon, but it's way more math intensive. But number one is fun. Number two is that the entire world of Fortnite Battle Royale is in a small pocket universe or perhaps a bubble dimension, both of which are gonna be spherical. And the people inside of it are destined to fight each other for some inexplicable reason. I kind of think back to the second chapter of the Sandman series with no spoilers there, but he's offered a little terrarium world like this composed of dreams. Or my personal favorite explanation is that these unfortunate people are trapped like in the movie Predators and they're forced to fight to the death for our entertainment, a very Truman-esque show sort of thing. But the extra dimensionality and, you know, traveling between dimensions and whatever is almost certainly going to be the best explanation here. And for those of you that are unaware, as a real science fact, and I've said that in a joking way on quite a few streams, but seriously, as a real science fact, there are many extra dimensions that we can't perceive, or at least perceive well. You've got your basic ones, you've got height, then you've got width, and then you know you've got depth. You've got your three dimensions that you experience every day. And we can experience and understand a fourth one, which is time. We don't really see time, but we uh, feel it, experience and understand it. And you want to get really technical. Space and time are tied together in a really complicated way. But I'm trying to keep this example really simple, okay? But there are other dimensions, other spaces and directions around you that you literally cannot perceive. The best example I could give you would be if imagine you were uh, a bacteria, a paramecium, and you lived on a little piece of paper. So as far as you're concerned, your whole world is flat. You can move left, right, up, down, but that's, you're just kind of moving around on a flat world. You have no idea what the word up means, that the concept of up is, is beyond your, your small brain. And that is how we exist in the world that we live in. And I'm not saying that our brains are small or that we're stupid or we're, we're you know, worth less than a paramecium or something. But the reality is that our sensory organs just don't pick up the extra dimensions around us so we don't properly understand how we move or fit into them. We can detect them with various scientific instruments, we can model them with mathematics, and they are incredibly important for a few uh, let's say space maneuvers and a few uh, quirks of physics and mostly particle physics for that matter but they're real okay so dimensions are real there's lots of things going on that you can't see lots of weird theories about it like ghosts are extra dimensional beings and god is a guy five levels up and let's not get into that but for lack of a better word if you were to take all of these extra dimensions uh, and so that we can imagine them compress them down into something flat in the same kind of way right now I exist in three-dimensional space and what you're watching for me is a flat 2D projection on a screen somewhere. And you were to take that and bend it and crumple it and smush those together in some sort of complicated or messy way, what you would do is create a lot of weird and impossible things like portals and teleportation. And in this case, you would almost certainly crack or destroy or rip or tear at the fabric of the world as you would perceive it, and the crack shows up at the top of the map. There's also smaller cracks of different shapes and sizes that you can go in one side and come out the other in a sort of logical paradox kind of way, but in reality what you're doing would be um, walking across broken spaces of higher dimensions that you can't perceive very well. Probably an extraordinarily dangerous thing to do for that matter. Most of the time you'd go in and not come back out. Uh, but the idea is that the little bubble dimension, the little pocket dimension, the extra space separated from the rest of us that the world of Fortnite Battle Royale existed in has been smushed or warped or bent or broken in a higher level fundamental way so that players can do some things that they wouldn't normally be able to. And the story element on this, where I think this is going, is that it is actually a literal story element, extra dimensionality, very popular in stories these days. The traveler in the map, as part of the little bit of lore, is not from this map. And the rocket that he uses isn't exactly like trying to blast off as it is just kind of trying to teleport him by our perspective. Now, perspective, perspective, man, my words are dying today. 
to somewhere else on the map. So when it fails, what he's actually doing is crunching and breaking and tearing dimensions around him, and the players on the map get to run around and use those cracks and extra dimensions to their advantage. Now, with the addition of the Porta Rift being a handheld, condensed version of that, it would appear that some of the players or characters, like the Drift character or whoever else, has the ability to understand this extra dimensionality, master it, and use it as an item for their own benefit. So my prediction is we're going to get even more complicated extra dimensionality stuff at the end of this season, and that it's going to involve some story of the characters or players of this season using that to their advantage and starting to master the world around them. Guys, that is it for this extremely, extremely unusual Fortnite video or fan theory video, but I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something useful, and if you did, don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe. Drifter out.